<laughs> so I'm Jana Greer. I own and operate Solar Sheep Inc. with my husband Ryan. And essentially we manage the vegetation on utility scale solar projects utilizing sheep. Hi, I'm David Dodge. Welcome to Green Energy Futures. Jana Greer is a registered nurse who, along with her husband Ryan, loved the idea of living in the country and operating a small farm. She never dreamt this passion would lead to her becoming a successful first-generation farmer, a nearly impossible feat. But by combining her passion for sheep ranching with solar farms, she's become a very successful rancher and consultant. My husband and I are both from Vancouver Island. Uh, didn't grow up on farms, we're first generation, but uh, knew that we had an interest in agriculture. And so we started on, you know, just a small acreage with a, with a few animals and uh, quickly kind of grew a passion for that and a passion in particular for, for sheep. After Ryan got a job in Alberta, the couple bought a small ranch near Strathmore, Alberta, where they had a small flock of sheep. Then, Jana discovered solar grazing, and by coincidence, Capital Power was building a 41-megawatt solar project near their ranch. So, she approached them. We spent a lot of time researching solar grazing over the years to figure out how it was done, um, what all that entails, and how we could be successful at it. So, when we approached Capital Power in 2021 with this idea, um, I mean, they were, they were just as excited about it as we were. And so it's created this very unique partnership where um, it's allowed us to grow how many animals we have. I mean, at one time we only had one sheep and then 10 sheep and then 60 sheep and 100 sheep. And so now we have uh, 600 breeding animals. Jana's now grazing a thousand sheep on the solar farm. It's allowed us uh, to grow our own operations and it's also expanded in to allow for additional revenue than than your traditional farming so it's been hugely positive for for both us and for capital power as well they've been incredibly supportive through this journey it's a win-win jana has a contract to manage the vegetation on the solar farm so capital power is happy and thanks to her own growing expertise in vegetation management she's improved the productivity of the site and her sheep are thriving she uses solar powered electric fences to manage the sheep oh i mean sheep like everyone else prefer potato chips over vegetables so if there's specific plants that they want to consume um they will just go and consume them if you let them have free reign. So restricting access to the entire site, condensing them on a smaller area, uh, forces them to, to perform well and to eat all of the vegetation that we, we need them to keep up with. It's essentially a mix of several different grasses and um, a whole bunch of legumes as well. So two blends of, two blends of alfalfa, there's some sanfoid in there and some sicer milk vetch. Just wanted a lot of biodiversity on the site. Uh, there's a lot of other animals that live here other than our, our sheep. So wanted to make sure that it created a habitat for everything else here. Jana also employs three four-legged helpers on the solar sheep farm. Good morning. So this is Daisy and this is Clyde. Hello. They, <laughs> he likes to sniff. They are our livestock guardian dogs. So we have three of these guys out here and their job is to protect the sheep. So uh, we know that coyotes use this space as well. So we just like to make sure that our, our animals are safe at all times. So that is their job. They stay with the sheep all day, every day until from the start of the season till the end of the season. Jana manages the land inside and outside the fence on the solar farm. There's 240 acres inside the fence with uh, a total of 320 acres. So our um, our agreement with Capital Power is that we manage both inside and outside the fence. Uh, so outside the fence, by doing that, allows us access to an extra almost 100 acres of grazing land, which is huge. And so the vegetation grows higher and thicker and fuller. And so every year we've been adding more and more animals. I think that we could probably run even a lot more from there. I mean, this, the sky's the limit with this site in particular because the vegetation and the way that it's managed 
allows it to rebound so quickly. Jan is not only a rancher, she also started Solar Sheep Inc., a consulting company to advise solar companies and landowners on vegetation management and agrivoltaics. Yeah, it's quite spectacular. I can't say the same is across the board for every solar site. A lot of that has to do with the vegetation. I mean, it's not it's not all the same for every single site that we've seen. Um, but I think that with time and having, you know, developers open to talking about uh, what goes into the vegetation and why it's important, we're going to see big changes there too. So I think the, the ability to support numerous amounts of animals under solar is, is exciting. I think there's lots of potential there. So This is a small solar farm. So the potential for expanding the practice of agrivoltaics is huge. Jan is now experimenting with other species to diversify her approach. Our pigs are over here. Enjoying, they're being lazy. They're rather lazy. Uh, Because they're new here, we wanted them cordon off in a section uh, away from the sheep. (laughs) No, you saying hi to me? Hello. He's just a baby. Hey, he's just a baby. Hi, girls. Well, these are a specific type of grazing pigs. Uh, they're called Cooney Cooney, and they come from New Zealand, actually. They've been, we've selected them to add to solar uh, simply because they are not like traditional pigs where they root up the ground and they dig for all kinds of things. These pigs have upward-turned snouts, which makes them grazers. They consume plants and other things left behind by the sheep, including parasites and worms, thus reducing the need for deworming agents and drugs. They're doing great. Uh, we've actually there's we've got a few at home, and there's actually uh, three of these girls that are coming home as well because our vet was just here last week, and we're having babies. So there's going to be some piglets coming at the beginning of October. Um, and so they will join them next year. So we should have uh, between 30 and 50 pigs running around here next year. So the goal at that time is to run them basically in unison with the sheep. Jenna's work has been so successful. They're already working on projects on other solar farms. And she's also offering her vegetation management and solar grazing services as a consultant. We've had farmers call us up and say, hey, you know, I'm interested in this. Um, Farmers uh, who also have been approached by solar to say, hey, we want to develop on your land. And they're thinking of ways to continue to use that space. Um, And so I've actually, yeah, I've had crop farmers phone me and say, hey, how do I get into sheep? (laughs) So we've had kind of a a little bit of everybody kind of approach us to say, hey, how does it work? What what does all all that entail? Jen has also joined the board of directors of Agrivoltaics Canada to help educate farmers, industry, and government about the incredible benefits of agrivoltaics, the combining of farming with solar. And I think the potential is huge. I mean, the addition of pigs here to allow for multi-species grazing was exciting. Um, But I mean, Canada is just in its infancy with regards to agrivoltaics. We're only, you know, just kind of got our foot in the door of what it actually means. And so I think there's tons of room for, you know, food production under solar and being able to still utilize that land and have it be dual purpose. So um, that could mean, you know, anywhere from from grazing to crop production. Uh, there's there's they're even looking into, you know, like berry production under solar, um, specific types of, of gardens. If a solar company comes to you and says, hey, I want to put some solar development on your land, um, being able to generate revenue from that, but then also still being able to generate revenue from your agricultural production side of things is huge. Numerous studies have already found under the most aggressive build-outs, solar will occupy less than 1% of farmland in Canada. And agrivoltaics offers a significant opportunity to dramatically improve the economics of farming, and in many cases, the productivity of the land itself. Learn more in our article that we wrote for the Earth and I magazine at greenenergyfutures.ca. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge.